In this lesson, we're going to work on dividing decimal numbers by whole numbers. So we're going to begin with 52.4 divided by 8, and then after we go through it and kind of use our intuition to understand what the rules are, um, after that we'll go ahead and um, go through a step-by-step -step process that I've outlined up above. So if I want to divide 52.4 by 8, we just follow our chapter 1 rules, and that is to put the first number inside of that partial box that we get from long division and put the other number on the outside. Now what I want us to do here is let's um, let's ignore our decimal point for a moment. Pretend it's not there. Uh, let's pretend that we are dividing the number 524 by 8. Okay? If we were doing that, we, are, we know how to do it. Uh, we would say 8 goes into 5 0 times, but 8 goes into 52 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. We get a remainder of 4. Again, I'm pretending that decimal point's not there. I would just drop the 4 down. 8 goes into 44 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. And at this point, we have a remainder other than 0 and there is uh, nothing left to drop down. So let's just pause the process here for a second. So we'll talk about in a moment what to do about this 4 down here. Um, but let's go back and address the fact that we were pretending to divide 524 by 8 this whole time. So what's the difference between what we were pretending to do and what the actual division problem is? Well, the dividend we pretended to have, 524, is exactly 10 times greater than 52.4. Right? Remember that we learned back in section 4.3 that moving the decimal 1 to the right in a number is the same as multiplying it by 10. So it's easy to see here that uh, 524 is 10 times greater than 52.4. So because of that, Understand that these numbers that we got up here, this 65 we see up above here, is really 10 times greater than what it should have been. Okay. Well, if 65 is 10 times greater than what it should have been, what should it have been? Well, it should have been 6.5, right? Because timesing by 10 would have moved that decimal over. So in reality, our quotient so far... Um, should be 6.5. And this is true in general that all we have to do when we are dividing a decimal number by a whole number is just send the decimal point in the dividend straight up and that will also be the location of the decimal point in the quotient. Alright, so so far we have 6.5. So hopefully that makes sense as to why why it is that we're getting uh, 6.5 when we're dividing. But the answer isn't 6.5 because I've got a remainder down here. Now when we're working with decimals we do not want to mess with remainders at all. Okay, We never want a remainder to be a part of our answer. So what we do with decimals is we just continue to divide until one of two things happen. Okay, Either the remainder zeroes out or we have enough digits in our quotient to round to whatever place it asked us to. Now just understand that that latter case is not going to happen for either of these examples because we weren't told to round to any place value. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for the remainder to zero out. And so the way we make that happen is we say that 52.4 is the same as 52.40. I think we can agree with that. 52.4 is the same as 52.40. And so we can drop our zero down, and so now all of a sudden I do have a digit to drop down and continue. 8 goes into 40 five times. 5 times 8 is 40. Now there's our remainder of zero, and so now I have permission to stop. So when I take 52.4 divided by 8, 
I get a quotient of 6.55. Let's try another example here. Um, well, before we try that example, let's carefully go through these steps and make sure they make sense as I've written them. So our step number one was to write the decimal point of the quotient directly above the decimal point of the dividend. So that's what this green stuff's all about. Just send it straight up before doing any division. Divide as if working with whole numbers, which is what we did. And then we continue the long division process adding zeros, okay, adding zeros at the end of the dividend, right, so this part right here was what we did right there, adding zeros at the end of the dividend after all digits in the dividend have been dropped down until the remainder is zero or you have enough digits to round to the specified place. And again, the reason we stopped in this first example is because we found the remainder to be zero finally at this point. All right, so now let's apply all these steps to this example. So we have 787.22 divided by 14. Okay, so we need to figure out how many times 14 goes into 78. Right? Well, you know, think about something easier than 14. 15 goes into 78 five times. Okay, so maybe I'll guess 5 for my 14. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 1 plus 2 is 7, so that's 70. So we get a remainder of 8. We drop down our 7. Now let's be smart here. We understood that 5 times 14 was 70, and 87 is 17 more than 70, so we could definitely fit 14 in another time um, in addition uh, you know, one more time than 5, and so the guess here should be 6. So 6 times 14, 6 times 4 is 24, 6 times 1 plus 2 is 8, so we get 84, and then a remainder of 3. We drop down our 2, and, ooh, I already realized that I made a screw up here. What did I forget to do? Well, I forgot to do step 1. You should always do step one, which is just send the decimal point straight up before doing any dividing. Okay, I'm not going to start the video over and and uh, and fix my mistake. Um, sometimes it's good for me to make state mistakes in front of you, but um, please do that first, um, not in the middle of the problem like I just did. Okay, now we drop down the two. 14 goes into 32 twice. Two times 14 is 28. I have a 4, and then we drop down our 2. 14 goes into 42 actually exactly 3 times. Because 3 times 14 is 42, so we have a remainder of 0. So here it wasn't necessary to continue to add zeros and drop them down because our remainder is 0 now. Um, but let's also understand that uh, if this remainder wasn't 0, we would go ahead and add zeros here. Um, and continue the long division process. So our answer is 56.23.